Okay, so um, Ira and I are back with you to talk a little bit more about this Ultra Cross College project that we have going on. Um, for folks that haven't been watching these videos or, or are fully aware of the project, then uh, I'll just give you a very quick intro that in 2020, uh, I was lucky enough to grow 21 different heirloom collards as part of the heirloom collard project. Uh, they overwintered, some of them winter killed, some of them didn't. So I was excited to see the winter survivors. I saved seeds from all of the ones that flowered the following year and crossed. And it ended up being a lot of seeds because I had a lot of collards in the ground. And so when I spoke to Ira, who's also a, an avid heirloom collard lover, then she was very excited to distribute these seeds through Southern Exposure Seed Exchange and get the seeds out to hopefully a lot of you guys that are, are going to be watching this video. So we have growers, hundreds of growers, I think maybe as many as 500 people bought packets of these seeds and are growing them across the country. And we're just trying to help you guys through the seed saving process, maybe selection and some regional adaptation and just excited to follow your journey and have you guys follow our journey so that we can all be experiencing what is this beautiful diversity in this collection? Do you have anything to, to jump in there with with this colored project? It's... No, and it, it really is a chance to look at the year roundness of colored. You know, we, we were before uh, we went live, we were talking about uh, in this collection, some of them are actually not going to see and uh, you know, what that's all about. And, uh, you know, there's kales that are somewhat perennial in these more temperate areas uh, and get to be walking stick size, the stems of them. So uh, we don't know what's going to happen with these uh, collars that aren't doing it. But uh, Chris says last time he just used them for summer collars for eating and uh, carry them through a whole nother season and see what happens. Yeah, and, and actually I was, so yeah, I had a bunch that didn't set seed in that second year when you expect them to, and they grew through the summer. At that point, I'd already got the seeds from them. So I was kind of ignoring them. So, you know, growing collards or any brassica in summer, they got, they got kind of chewed up by harlequin bugs and cabbage moths and all that sort of stuff, but they still survived into the winter. And I was, I was, personally curious to see what they do the following spring but then a, a herd of sheep came and ate them all so I my my, my experiment was like <laughs> prematurely cut short um or my unintentional experiment but there's there are tree collards out there and they get an enormous because they just keep growing and never actually set seeds so it's it's kind of uh yeah it's, it's kind of amazing to see that perennial life cycle of the collards the other thing I wanted to check in about, because um, I, I kind of remember this the first time I grew collards all the way through to seeds, was even when they do set seed, there's still like a really long time in the ground. Uh, I'm thinking back that I started these seeds in flats in July of 2021, and it's now almost June, and I still don't have seeds to harvest. So do you, do you want to talk a little bit about that? the fact that this is basically a 12 month crop if you're gonna take it through the seed. Right, but 12 months for something that's a perennial is pretty quick. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Uh, um, yeah. when, when would you expect to start seeing mature seeds farming? Cause I feel like I keep, I've got these big fat green pods now and I keep going out and, and opening one up and they're, they, they're still green. They're not, they're not browning down or anything yet. Well, it's been a, at least here in Virginia, it's a uh, cooler days than usual in the spring. So, because I think that of the uh, collard seeds is starting to ripen up at the, you know, right around Memorial Day. Uh, and sometime, you know, like in those first weeks in June, but they're kind of being on the slow side. So, uh, you know, it might be more toward the end of June when they're ripe. One thing, you know, to remember when they are a little slow like that, because the longer they're out there, the more exposed to various critters they are. So uh, it's worthwhile to notice when the uh, first uh, mature seeds are ready and bring them in before, you know, 
some moth or weevil decides to have supper. For sure. And and with that kind of idea, because if if you've been watching your collards and you've seen them flower, then they kind of like flower incrementally over quite a long period of time. And, and then obviously the pods and the seeds form in the same kind of time frame. So I'm feeling like I'm going to have a whole bunch of pods that are ready and I'm going to have other pods that aren't ready. How do you kind of like, when is the best time to go ahead and start, cut that plant and dry it down inside? Well, uh, either, like I say, you can clip off, uh, you know, them uh, more as little individual uh, seed areas, or you can wait until, well, we'd say more than half of them seem dry and then uh, take the whole stock and let them dry under cover and uh, see who dries down. Uh, you know, because they, they're going to still be maturing after you cut them, if you cut the whole stock, flowering stock. Yeah, yeah, that's, that was my experience last year. I, I almost felt like I left it too late last year. By the time we were cutting off the whole plants and taking them into the barn, we laid them out on a, on a large tarp and ran fans on them. But even as we were cutting those stalks to carry into the barn, you, you could hear the seeds falling onto the ground as we were cutting them in the field. So I felt like I lost quite a lot of seeds because I had allowed them to dry too far in the field. And those pods were really brittle and started dropping their seeds literally mm -hmm. as I was trying to harvest them. Do you, do you remember when you brought them in last year? I think it was maybe that first week of July. So um, my feeling is that I could have cut them a little bit earlier when they were still a little greener and they wouldn't have dropped mm -hmm. their seeds. And then they, like you said, they could have matured more inside. Now, I, I, because I had so many collards, I still had more than enough seeds. But, um, but I know I definitely lost a fair few in the field in, the, in that harvesting process. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's their tactics for making sure some of them fall yeah. on fertile ground. <laughs> sure. yeah yeah that's that's what i thought i was like this is this is cunning they're already jumping out into the soil um so i think i went ahead and sowed a cover crop after it so i didn't get to see whether those would self-seed because it was kind of the right time for them to be growing mm -hmm. um as a as a fall crop but i i went ahead and cover cropped over the top of them um w one other thing maybe to talk about as people are um seeing their collards get big and full of pods is is staking them do you have uh, advice on supporting them as they go beyond collard leaf stage? Well, yeah, uh, we have a lot of T-posts that we use for various things and they're easy to put in and relatively easy to take out again later. So uh, we make a, uh, do something that's a little bit like a Florida string weave, put them there and then weave it you know, uh, you, you instead of just having two big plants uh, on one tea post, you know, you're going to have four that are supported uh, uh, by the same post. And that, that works out pretty well because they get to be really tall. You know, you're thinking, say, they were two and a half or three feet tall and the Wearing sock is like six or seven. <laughs> it's like over your head. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's and if you let them fall down, they will be in the ground, and they will not really. They will rot rather than dry. Yeah, yeah. And um, another observation is, um, and I, I've heard you talk about this before, Ira, that if you've got small plants going into the fall, then mm -hmm. often you'll have small seed crop but if you've got those big healthy plants going into the fall then um when you come out on the other side it's spring then you get these big ones so I, I had two different planting times and the ones that i got in nice and early as a like you know kind of july started september transplanted collards that got really big in the fall then this the the sheer quantity of seeds on those plants is like immense but the ones that I was, mm -hmm. you know, just a little bit behind the curve and got in a, a lot later and went into the fall as kind of like small baby collards, then they've definitely put on some spring growth, but you can certainly see that they're more like this size and, and have 
a fraction of the amount of seeds. So just something to remember going forward as we try and grow more seeds is nice big healthy fall plants makes big healthy spring plants which makes big healthy seed crop so yeah it's that summer planting you know for your abundant fall and winter uh because you know you you get that fall effect and if you are like three weeks later you know and planting them it 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 has a, a tremendous a, a, a effect on how big they get later. So, yeah, you know, get yourself there. And if there's a lot of bugs around, you, you can use grow cover and uh, keep them from eating your little seedlings. <laughs> it feels almost necessary in the South. Like if you put out little brassica seedlings in late summer, they're just, it's almost guaranteed. I feel like they're gonna get eaten up by something. Uh-huh. So um, then I guess the main message from this video then is, is hopefully you've got your collards and they're going to seed uh, just like a, a few more weeks, maybe a month of patience to make sure they go through to full uh, maturity. And as they start kind of browning down, or if you open up a pod and you, you're seeing brown seeds on the inside and not green seeds, then they're at a point where you can either clip separate branches if you're not dealing with too many plants or harvest the whole plant and allow it to finish drying down uh, in a covered area or somewhere with good airflow or like I've done is using fans for a, for a week or two to really let it go all crunchy and totally dried down and allow those seeds to do that final maturation process. Uh, and then we're into the kind of the the whole threshing, winnowing, cleaning the seeds. I, I don't think we're going to cover that in this video because that's a whole process in itself. And I'd love to do that visually, uh, but we'll certainly, we'll check back again once we get some of our own collard seeds harvested and we'll be able to show you that process. But just, just keep an eye on them and uh, we'll have collard seeds to plant again pretty soon. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, any final words of wisdom for collard seed saving? Well, just be patient and make sure that you harvest those uh, early set, nice big plump seeds before they fall on the ground because, you know, they really want to ripen and fall on the ground. <laughs> that is definitely good advance. I learned that one myself last year. Awesome. Well, um, I'm hoping to cut some extra video from the field into this video so you can see some of the stuff we've been talking about. Um, feel free to email me with questions or use the Facebook community seed selection group to either share your own photographs or ask questions as you're getting through to seed saving. This is, this is the stage where it's like, this is why we've been doing this work is to save these seeds in your own local areas and be able to plant them again. So thank you for following the journey. Thank you, Ira. Yeah. Yep, it was fun being with you again. See you later. Mm -hmm.